And we love to draw in, you know, from all of Star Wars yeah. and even things that aren't canon. If they feel right, we'll, we'll pull them in. You know, for me, when I'm telling those stories, I don't, I don't limit things. I, I did an animation, so I would do it distinctly different in live action. I, there's just the story that it is. And I was telling it in one medium, like Rebels is a different style than Clone Wars even, uh, visually. That changed the way I could execute certain things in Rebels. Uh, so the story has kind of evolved since I worked on Rebels. Uh, working with John and kind of setting things down in The Mandalorian created an opportunity to see how does Ahsoka work as a character in live action. Because, you know, I don't know, like with the, you know, the, the head tails and the makeup, like what does that look like? Can a performer bring that to life in a way that is meaningful and, and people love that character? So is it going to feel right to them? Is it going to feel right to us? And I was very fortunate. The whole thing kind of came together for me with Rosario when uh, we talked with her and when she, you know, put on the costume and became Ahsoka, I was like, you know, this is gonna work. It really kind of was as simple as that. Something's coming. Something dark. I sense it. And uh, it goes back to a, a quote that uh, Kathleen Kennedy gave me when I was really going over the casting of Ahsoka. And I said, how do you know when it's the right person? And she just looked at me and said, Dave, you just know. And she's been a part of so many films that I, I love growing up. It's like, again, I'm in a very privileged position to have a mentor like her advising me and just giving you the knowledge that you need to make the choices creatively that, that, that you end up doing. And uh, she was right. I just knew when it was Roe, and that kind of brought Ahsoka together uh, for me uh, when I got to make the episode, and off we ran. I started hearing whispers about Thrawn's return as heir to the Empire. to prepare for the worst. The Jedi fell a long time ago. There aren't many left. As I've learned to work in this galaxy, it, it's a long play. And if things go right, you get to do more of your story. Mm -hmm. And things, I think, have broken in a good way for us. And. Uh, People have enjoyed the characters uh, that we've been uh, making. So certain opportunities came up the further we kind of went along, <clears throat> you know, and uh, it's a part of the timeline that probably for me and, and you growing up with the original trilogy, Return of the Jedi was the end, but then you're always like, but what happens next? And then when episode seven was set so many years later, like probably when I was a kid, I never would have thought it would have been that much later, but it made sense. It's basically real time. Yeah, yeah. it's almost real time. It, it it created an opening where you go, wow. So a lot of the things maybe that that we knew before are probably in there. How do we excavate that? And there, there's things that existed because when mm -hmm. I was younger, we didn't have movies, but there were comic books, there yeah. were novels. So things that are sort of encompassed in the EU or legends. But those are, you know, a lot of that works very well. Mm -hmm. uh, with, you know, uh, clearly there's, there, are, there are decisions that have to be made to fit it all together. Mm -hmm. But for us, it's, it's, I think one thing we're in agreement about is that the characters, as special as they are, the story has to drive what characters are in, the, in it. Yeah. And, uh, and unlike how we play, we joke that it's like we're playing with action figures because <laughs> uh, it's like, what's in the box? Let's play with the, what's in the box, you know? And that's what you do when you're, when you're, uh, when you're playing and you're a kid. Uh, as we're getting deeper and deeper into this, it's, you start to have to, you know, really uh, map things out and figure out what that story is and then have the characters uh, arc and uh, 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 those characters fulfill what their growth cycle is and what their mythic journey is, their mythic uh, hero's journey is. And uh, those things have to fit together well, otherwise it won't feel like Star Wars. That's, that's always been George's base, um, you know, uh, um, uh, objective 
is how does it, you know, he's a student of Joseph Campbell, how does it fit into the, a narrative that has the, the hero's journey involved? And so as we have more and more characters line up, you have to figure out how those characters are arcing and, and if it feels ultimately like a Star Wars story. You are now Din Grogu, Mandalorian apprentice. This is the way. One of the things we, we really like about uh, what the shows that we've been working on have turned into is that it, the tone of each episode, and, and in certain cases each series, really reflects the storyteller or the filmmaker. So in The Mandalorian, you could have many different tones. Even though the writing is consistent across them, different uh, filmmakers will bring different perspectives. And so each episode hopefully feels different, though they should sit alongside one another. With Skeleton Crew, uh, it, it, I would go even further there because it's, it's, it's Watson Ford and a whole array of wonderful directors. Some have worked with us before, some who haven't. And so each episode has its own feel to it. But the cohesive strand of, of the tone is definitely inspired by it, uh, you know, it's interesting because, you know, Kathy Kennedy's the, <laughs> you know, running Lucasfilm. And so when John Watts and, and Chris Ford come in and talk about wanting to do something that feels like an Amblin movie <laughs> and has that tone, yeah. it's like you're speaking right to the person who is there and knows the, you know, the 11 herbs and spices that go into it. <laughs> so, uh, so it's interesting hearing them pitch and how she reacts to that. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, be, before any of this, Kathy was a, you know, you just look at the producing resume, that was, that was how she came into the business. And, and so working with filmmakers like Watson Ford, as they're talking about it, it becomes a really interesting collaboration because it's like, let's pick the right cast. How does this fit? But it also has to feel like Star Wars. So, and Star Wars is interesting because it's, you know, when people think of Star Wars as a genre, it really is a, is, is a number of subgenres within the Star Wars genre. So, and, and because those were George's influences, so it could feel like a Western, it could feel like a World War II film, it could feel like a samurai film. And so you could push limits, and especially in Clone Wars, they, they, they deviated into many different, to thrillers and to noir and uh, different types of adventures and different tones. So th I think that's what's keeping us all so engaged and why filmmakers like to come through and why I'm continuing my collaboration here is because it's never like you're just doing one thing. There's always room and as long as you adhere to a certain aesthetic and we all agree uh, that it feels like, is it Star Wars or not? If it feels like it's Star Wars, there's a lot of room for how you can move around. And it's interesting too, as you see the panel and these great trailers, how different they all are, but how they all sit together. You know, you would never group them together, but thanks to the world that George created, they all feel like they share a common, a common uh, underlying aesthetic. Everything's gonna be all right, kid. We love Ahmed and he did such a great job. It was a, a real thrill for us to, you know, get him involved and, and, you know, we talked with him about it. We come up with these ideas and we think of like who might work with it. We make sure to, before we get too far, bring them into the process. So it's not just like, here's who you're going to play. It's like, what do you think of this? You know, we want you to be this person. What are your thoughts on it? Make it a real collaboration and think it's really key to the success of it. And. Uh, he, he has, I didn't know how much he knew about martial arts. Did you know that, like yeah, coming in? No, and then he's like showing us, he puts like a lightsaber and he's suddenly swinging it all around. And you're like, oh, okay, so. You no, know, he studies like Arnest, like he knows how to do the yeah. double double wielding. And and he had <laughs> he had done a lot of work on that character yeah. of Kellerman Beck for uh, Jedi Temple Challenge. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he's been involved with Star Wars yeah. all the way through and, and definitely had, they had formulated this character. And, and we love to draw in, you know, from all of Star Wars yeah. and even things that aren't canon. If they feel right, we'll, we'll pull them in. And, and so that was, it just made sense, you know, because you're also looking at who, who could it be? You know, yeah. there's, who's on the list? You don't want to just uh, put a Do Jedi in Do we even show there. a person, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. is it, that everything's on the table at that point, because, you know, you want it to be what everyone 
imagines it or dreams it to be. And you know, when we came over the elevator yeah. and the door, it's like, yeah, it was on the inside of that door. Well, you know, I think people people were pretty. No, happy. it was great. It was yeah. great. And now that character exists squarely in you know Star Wars canon. And boy, I think people dig seeing that character. I love. I yeah. want to learn more about that character. It was fun watching him on set because we had clones and we had Naboo guards. And I think for him, it was like a real flashback. Now, interesting because there wouldn't have been any clones on set because they were all digital in the prequels. But, you know, we actually had, you know, people in armor. Counterintuitively, <laughs> yeah. the, the more recent ones have yeah, the less old CG school. characters. Yeah, yeah. But it was, uh, you know, I think he really paused and took it in. You know, when you're a veteran of this thing, I think uh, it hits you in a, probably a very different way. And, and you know, he, he worked with George, which is very special, such a you know, a close-knit group of people now, and uh, I think it's fun to have these people still included, like in Obi-Wan, you know, Hayden and Ewan, like how great was it just seeing them? Uh, so, you know, it, it lives on. Star Wars keeps uh, continuing in the best possible way. Yes.